Hey everyone, it's Ben Hardy here, and in today's gonna be reviewing the GMC Sierra AT4X AEV edition. This has been my test vehicle for the week, so I'm really excited to tell you guys what it's like to actually live with this truck. Before we get into this video though, as always, if you're gonna save time and money the next time you purchase a car, link to my car buying guide in the description down below. Let's get into it. Powering this is the 3 liter inline 6 Duramax that goes through a 10 speed automatic transmission. It puts out 305 horsepower and then 495 pound feet of torque. When it comes to fuel economy around town, you can expect to get in the high teens. And then on the highway, you can actually expect to get, you know, low to mid 20s, depending on how heavy your foot is. Now, before we move forward with this review, I do want to mention if you're going to see more videos just like this, then I recommend you subscribe because I post content every single day. So starting with the hood, I love how it's kind of like razor on either side, it has like a boxy look. And then the GMC Sierra has really cool looking headlights because of the C shape there. And then you can see the fog lights have been integrated into the AEV bumper, really rigid recovery points. You also have extra skid plate protection underneath with this truck as well. And then I love the coloration here for the AT4X with the grille. Putting it all together, definitely one of the best looking modern trucks. And a big part of that is because of the bumper design. Now around the side here, our time wheel setup is 275, 70, 18 in the front and over in the rear. You can see here with these special wheels as part of this AEV package. And I'll be testing these tires out off-road, but you guys can see pretty aggressive tread pattern. We do have a lift on the AT4X, just like the regular AT4 two inch. And then I like the fender flares here, not too crazy out there. Got the Duramax badge, AT4X, and then we also have rock rail protection with this as well. And then kind of hard to see, but we do have multi-matic shocks with this, and then this still uses traditional leaf springs. And then here's the side profile with the truck. Definitely has a really nice stance front to rear. Big part of that is that two inch lift. Now take a look at the key fob. We have our lock and unlock function. We got the remote start function, tailgate drop down, and then the GMC logo. And taking a look at the bed, you guys can see we've got the grab handle to help out with getting in. This also comes with the kicker sound system here and the tailgate, which is pretty cool the feature. We got a full outlet here in the bed as well. And this is the multi-pro, so this turns into a step. You guys have seen this a million times with my GMC reviews. Uh, but anyways, lifting it up, it's a little bit heavier. C-shape with the taillights, then you guys can see with all the badges, including the AEV badge, and then they actually make that satin black. And then we've got the upgraded rear bumper, which again, looks significantly better than stock, and it's a lot more practical with the recovery points and all that. So putting it all together, let me guys think, but again, I think this is one of the best looking trucks. The only thing that I think this truck is missing is just 35s. If it had 35s, boy, oh boy, would it look good. Now take a look at the door panel, really nice trim throughout. This is basically like a Denali interior. It's a good way to look at it. And then you can see the speakers for the sound system. The nice trim continues onto the seats. You can see with the behind the seat storage, perforated all down the center portion and they got more under seat storage as well. Got stitching on the grab handle. Legroom back here is obviously fantastic. And then we've got some cup holders here, heated seats, got USB ports down below as well. And then headroom, it's good. Now take a look at the front door panel again, really nice trim, blind spot monitoring with the mirrors. You can see the design down below with all the cross stitching and everything. AT4X right there, memory seat function, all of our window controls, uh, front tour automatic, get another speaker for the Bose sound system. 1,048 pounds of payload capacity, and then towing I think is just under, yeah, so it's 8,500 pounds. AEV there on the headrest, then AT4X down below. Perforated all down the center portion. All of our adjustments on the side, including the massage seat function. It's the AT4X again. And then we got our drive line select and our drive mode select in the same area. Uh, Two-speed transfer case, advanced four-wheel drive system, all of your light controls, heads-up display, steering wheel is power adjustable. Now taking a look at the steering wheel, you can see soft touch all around. You've got the cool contrasted stitching there. Radio controls in the back. We also have our paddle shifters, controls for the center stack, and you guys can see cruise control there with heat steering wheel function. And then we've got a regular stock there in the back, and then also the paddle shifters. Now you can see I just did a little trip around town um, in terms of like the last trip that I did, and that's why it keeps going down is because there's so few mileage put on it that idling is lowering the fuel economy. But anyways, I was averaging just over 18 miles per gallon. Again, that's an around town trip, no highway driving. Diesels always do much better on the highway. Um, but anyways, you got the different drive modes here, which I will be testing out some of these very, very soon. 
360 camera system, which I'm gonna say this is a game changer with this truck. So the horizontal display helps out quite a bit, but the trajectory lines and everything, it just makes parking this truck so much easier. And modern pickup trucks are so big, they're all like 230 plus inches in length. It's just a big vehicle. Uh, but yeah, really good response time with the screen as well, uh, easy to use. Got our giant engine stop start button, dual zone climate, heated and ventilated seats. You can see with the lane departure here, parking sensors, auto stop start, tailgate drop down, hazard lights, stability control, hill descent control, front and rear locking differentials, selectable in the AT4X. Shifter for the 10 speed, we got our trailer brake controls. You can see some couple of nice trim here in the center console. Wireless phone charging pad as well. Got some outlets and everything inside there. And the nice trim across the dash, we also have the heads up display. And then we have the double glove box set up here. Nice trim on the outside of the glove box. Camera rear view mirror, premium headliner with this as well. Uh, and you know, it's all over. And then we do have a sunroof and then of course a power sliding rear window. So here's the window sticker for this AT4X with the AEV package. Um, kind of hard to see because it's a smaller window sticker on my phone. Um, but anyways, total MSRP, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's just under 90,000, so it's 88,585. Let's see how it drives. Well, let's talk about visibility before we set off. Here's your visibility over the hood, both the mirrors, do a blind spot ring, throw it through the rest of the rear, and let us set off. So, setting off in the AT4X AEV package, having to refilm this because the GoPro was like slanted too much and the video just came out awkward the first time, so we're doing this again. Uh, first off, seat comfort in the AT4X is really good. You got massaging seats and all of that. I do still prefer the seats in the ZR2 compared to this in terms of comfort. It seems like the bolstering is a little bit more open on those, but these are still really comfortable seats nonetheless. And then it drives really well. Ride quality is great, super comfortable with the suspension. These multimatic shocks do a really good job. The bigger 33 inch tall tires also help out. I do still think this should have 35s though. I think 35s would make way more sense with this truck. Um, and again, around town driving with this, able to get, you know, in that 18 mile per gallon range. I mean, it's closing in on 19 miles uh, per gallon, but I would say 18 is kind of like a safe bet, 18, 19. And then aside from that, a really luxurious looking interior. And, and this is the biggest difference between AT4X and ZR2, right? ZR2 has the kind of rugged, utilitarian, practical interior. This is, you want something a little bit more business, right? You want something a little bit more fancy. So that's, that's why you'd go for AT4X and the massaging seats as well. And I guess if you're a business owner, bigger tax write-off, <laughs> right? And then aside from that, the diesel is just so good. Uh, I, I talked to some people about why Ford got rid of their uh, Power Stroke diesel and kind of like, this isn't from Ford directly, but kind of consensus I got from people is that Ford was in the process of building out the Power Boost and they realized that, you know, the diesel, right, they, they don't want it because they, the Power Boost has more torque and more horsepower and it gets, you know, fuel economy similar to a diesel allegedly. And so that's kind of why they went away from that. I think that that was short-sighted because you just can't replace a diesel. Um, even if you have more torque from a gas engine, even with electric assist, which gives it a bunch of torque offline, it just, if it's not a diesel, it won't have that diesel feel. And of course the diesel sound as well. It's just, it's, it's unbeatable. And I think the diesel really is the big selling point, <clears throat> excuse me, with modern GM trucks, you know, the trucks from Chevy and from General Motors, because again, for a diesel, it gets good fuel economy and it just drives so well, really good torque band really just great powertrain. I don't have anything bad to say about how this powertrain performs. And I mean, other than like, you know, diesel powertrains would all be cooler if they didn't have all the stupid emissions stuff, but you know, it's the world we live in. So when you put all that together, how this truck is packaged, how it looks, again, the only thing I can really knock this for is the fact it doesn't have 35s. If this had 35s, I would be able to say 100%, I'd rather have this than a Ford Raptor. Because it doesn't have 35s, you know, the Raptor, because it can do the Baja stuff, I think it's a little bit cooler. Uh, looks a little bit better with those bigger tires. But yeah, I mean, once they, I, I'm sure AEV's got it, they're, they're gonna do something. Once they put 35s on this truck, I think that it'll just be, with this packaging, the best truck. But you know, for those of you that don't necessarily need all the off-road capability that this package provides, I do wanna mention that like, 
if you're not gonna take this truck off-road, I understand some people get this for the looks, fair enough, but if you're not gonna take this off-road, it doesn't really make sense to get it. You'd be better off getting an AT4 that still has some off-road capability, but isn't going to be uh, as constrained by that, right? So it's gonna have better payload capacity, better towing capacity. You'd be, you'd be better off getting that uh, compared to this. And then the other thing, um, uh, the other package would be like, you know, an SLT or an elevation with more features, right? Because again, better, or, you know, Denali, if you wanna go uh, luxury. So the point that I'm trying to make is GM is killing the truck game. Um, we'll see what that new Ram 1500 is like with the inline six, but I think that GM will probably still end up uh, winning because of where their trucks are priced, the features they have and the, and the powertrains, right? Like it's crazy. We now live in a world where General Motors is the only manufacturer that has a diesel and a V8 in their lineup, right? Ford has a V8 still, Ram's gotten rid of the V8. And so it's like, you can get the two coolest types of powertrains from the same manufacturer, diesel and V8. And so I think that that is, I don't know, a really cool fact. Let me know what you guys think about the AT4X and on the highway, man, again, no problem with the torque, more than enough torque to stay up to highway speeds, doesn't struck super low RPMs. I love this truck. I think if I need a pickup truck, I don't know if I'd get the AT4X. I think I'd, I kind of lean more towards the ZR2. I'm, I'm gonna get one of these though, if I need another pickup truck in the future.